Hello and welcome to the Anatelli Center in Jersey City. Tonight we have Mac Basketball as the Peacocks host the Ryder Bronx. My name is Chris Radicke and I'll describe the action for you as the Peacocks look to break a two-game losing streak and extend their five-game winning streak at home. Peacocks undefeated here at the Anatelli Center. If they're going to come away with a victory, they're going to need a very good effort against a very talented Ryder team. Ryder lost at Iona 91 to 64 on Sunday. Iona shot 57 percent from three-point range and over 60 percent in the second half. Ryder have won four straight games before that. They're talented in the front court and the back court. Peacocks are going to need a better defensive effort on their Western New York trip. They allowed Canisius to shoot 52 percent and Niagara 49 percent on Sunday afternoon. So the Peacocks are going to have to get it going. They're going to have to contend with the size and the speed of Ryder. And if you didn't get a chance to see some of the first game, the Peacocks are going to have a chance to be down before we even start the game. In the women's game, the shot clock wasn't working. So we had a couple of technical free throws before the game. Couldn't get it working between games. So we have portable shot clocks on each side of the floor. I'm going to do the best I can. Try and take a look down and keep the flow going of the game. But certainly a unique situation. Have been doing these games a long time now, over 10 years. And have yet to see this where we've had portable shot clocks. But that's what we're going to have tonight here at the Anatelli Center. Let's take a look at tonight's starting lineups. First for the Bronx. The Bronx come in at 11 and 7 overall, 4 and 2 in the MAC. They're coached by Kevin Baggett, a 1989 graduate of St. Joe's in his sixth season. Baggett is 96 and 86, 53 percent. The 2015 MAC Coach of the Year in the backcourt for the Bronx. Stevie Jordan is in the lineup, wearing number 23, a six-foot sophomore. 170 pounds from Ben Salem, Pennsylvania. 14 points per game, four rebounds. Jordan hurt his ankle late in the first half against Iona. Iona took off from that point on, but Jordan in the starting lineup tonight. Number two is Jordan Allen. Wearing number two, Allen is a six foot four, 195 pound redshirt freshman from Dover, Delaware, averaging 13 and a half points per game. Number 14 is Demencio Vaughn. Vaughn, a 6'5", 210-pound redshirt freshman from New York, New York, 13.1 points per game. Number 12 is Anthony Dorham, a 6'3", 190-pound junior guard from Philadelphia, averaging 6.5 points per game. Dorham, 48 assists and just 14 turnovers coming in. And up front, wearing number 11, Divine Eke, the main transfer, getting his first start as a Bronx. This is his 18th ball game, comes in averaging just under two points per game. While at Maine had a career game of 29 points and 16 rebounds against Army back on December 2nd of 2015. Now the starting lineup for the Peacock. St. Peter's comes in at 8 and 9 overall, 2 and 4. In Mac play, they're coached by John Dunn in his 12th season, a 1992 graduate of Ithaca. He is 147 and 216. That is 40 percent. Peacocks will send out three guards at the point. The freshman, number three, Elijah Gonzalez, five feet nine inches tall, 155 pounds from Portland, Oregon. Elijah averaging six points per game. 42 assists, 18 turnovers for Elijah. Also has 20 steals. Number 24 is Quinn Taylor, a 6'4", 185-pound sophomore from Amarillo, Texas. Quinn averaging 7.5 points per game, just under 6 boards per contest. Wearing zero, Nick Griffin, a 6'2", 175-pound graduate student from Rockville, Maryland. The George Washington transfer leads the team in scoring 14.5 points per game. At four, number 23, Sammy Doe, a 6'7", 220-pound junior from Brooklyn, averaging 10.5 points per game and rounding out the lineup. Nambi Anechionia, a graduate student like Griffin, seven points per game, two rebounds. Now, we were told we are going to have technical free throws before the game, but that did not happen. So the Peacocks have it first, moving from right to left. And now a whistle underneath, a hold. It will be on Durham, so just 13 seconds in. The Bronx pick up the first foul.
Peacocks will throw it in to the left of the basket. Idowu looks back to Griffin. Griffin working off the screen. Gonzalez back to Griffin. A low pass to Idowu. A good catch out to Griffin. Has some room. It spins out. So a good look for Nick to start off the ball game. Comes in shooting 38% from three-point range. Bronx work it into Eke. Eke facing up. Eke in the paint. The kick out to Jordan. Vaughn, the lefty, a three. That's no good off the heel of the rim. Offensive rebound to Eke. A contested shot from the left corner is no good for Allen. Peacocks finally get it. Here's a lead pass to Taylor. Flying to the basket. He is denied by Allen. The Bronx, five on four the other way. Jordan left wing, Jordan to the left elbow. The kick out near side to Durham, his three. That's too strong. Eke, the offensive rebound. Eke between defenders, forces it up, and he gets the basket. So Divine Eke, his first start as a Bronx, has our first two points. And we played about a minute and 20 seconds. The energy has been good on both sides, but the Peacocks need to shore up the defensive glass. Anacione, a three, that's short from right in the circle. Ryder with the rebound. Jordan into the front court, crosses over on Gonzalez. A spin, it's taken away by Gonzalez. Gonzalez, two on two, Gonzalez forcing the action. The step by, he lays it in. Elijah Gonzalez to the basket. Bronx quickly back the other way. They average 82 points per game. The Peacocks just under 68 per contest. Eke, right wing. Now gives it up. Ryder holding on the perimeter with Jordan. We played just over two minutes. We're knotted at two. Peacocks won both the games last season. Jordan calmly floats it in off the glass. Comes in averaging 14 points per game. Five Bronx and double figures. And Echionia holding left wing to the baseline to Gonzalez. He needs to get it out of there. He does. Play just at about two and a half minutes, 10 on the shot clock. Griffin, right side. Gonzalez holding. Gonzalez on the drive. And Echionia into a seam. His floater is good. He got the roll. Namdi and Echionia with the basket comes in averaging seven. Roll that one through. We are tied at four. 17 12 to go in the first half. Durham goes left baseline for Eke on the drive, the kick out. A wide open three is good by Vaughn. The lefty strokes it, comes in, shooting 38% from three point range, averaging 13 per contest. Give Eke the assist. Seven to four, Bronx. 16.50 to go in the first half. Griffin in the high post, the quick release, and it's good. So if you're looking at this matchup, before the game, you're thinking about pace of play in the early going. The Peacocks have been willing to go with the Bronx. Jordan on the run. That floater is no good. Taylor, the quick outlet to Gonzalez. Gonzalez scampering into the front court. Griffin touches it right side. And that Gionio wide open three. That spins out. Taylor got a piece of it. The loose ball is gathered in by Durham. Jordan driving the baseline. A one-handed pass underneath the Vaughn, and he lays it in. 9-6 Ryder. 16-10 to go in the first half. Peacocks will settle it down a bit. Taylor out top for Griffin. Peacocks with 15 to shoot. Gonzalez, high post for Anechionia. Didn't have anything. Gonzalez trying to attack. Good defense by Jordan Allen. Griffin, the pump fake. Griffin with two on the shot clock. Leans in, throws it up, scrapes off the rim. Idowu had a crack at it, and now we'll have a Peacock foul. So the crowd behind us trying to help St. Peter's out by calling out the time on the shot clock. It's got to be an adjustment for the players. It's not above the backboard. On each side of the floor, it's on tables, stationary, excuse, yeah, stationary, I guess you could say right in the corner these portable shot clocks. So that'll bring us to our first media timeout. The first foul on Idowu, each team with one. 15.42 to play in the first half. Ryder leading St. Peter's 9-6 to six is St. Peter's basketball on YouTube.
15.42 to go before halftime. It's been an energetic start for both teams. Ryder leading St. Peter's 9-6. Peacocks 3 of 8 from the field. Already 0 of 3 from three-point range. On average, the Peacocks take 24 threes per game, make about 8.5. They're 35% for the season. Ryder 4 of 8 from the field. They've taken four threes. They've hit one. So the Bronx with a three-point lead. Allen to the right elbow. Drifting on the pull-up. No good. Peacocks with the rebound. Peacocks being out rebound the early going. 7-3. Ryder with two offensive boards. The Peacocks with none. Devontae Turner just in for St. Peter's. Went to cut. The pass was behind him from Gonzalez. Sammy Doe will also seeing his first action. Doe was 6'7", 220 pound junior from Brooklyn. Devontae Turner, the junior college transfer, 6 feet, 175 pounds. Turner, second on the team at scoring 11 points per game, an offensive foul, and the Peacocks will get it back off the Ryder turnover. Bronx have given away twice, the Peacocks once. 15-12 to go in the first half. Peacock ball moving from right to left. And Jai posting up, couldn't get it. Now will set a side ball screen. Gonzalez faked the pass in the corner to Taylor. Now he's in a bit of trouble. Turner with eight to shoot. Griffin to the right baseline. His pull up pop is no good, but it's tipped out to Griffin at the foul line. Finds Taylor. Taylor thought about driving on Eke, thought better of it. He brings it back out, and the Peacocks will reset the offense, trailing 9 to 6. 14 35 remaining in the first half. Peacocks with 18 to shoot. NJ on the perimeter, hands for Gonzalez. Turner into a seam. Gonzalez, 4 3. It's good. Elijah Gonzalez with his 13th three of the season, now 13 of 28 from distance, and the Peacocks have tied it at 9. 14 14 to go in the first half. Eke in the high post, driving to the basket. Good defense. As I got it out of my mouth, the whistle blew. It looked like Enjai read the play. Didn't lean in, but the official along the baseline saw it differently. So Enjai picks up his first, so both Enjai and Ido will have one. Divine Eke at the line. It's been an adventure at the stripe for the redshirt sophomore from Plainfield. Five of 20 from the line. He makes that one. The Bronx love to get to the stripe. Entering tonight's game, they had taken 86 more free throws than opponents, but they've still been outscored by five points at the line. They have a couple of really good free throw shooters, however. Allen at 88%. Durham, 79%. 77% for Vaughn. Each team with two fouls. Eke looking to give Ryder a two point lead. That one's long. Skids into the hands of Enjai. Gonzalez into the front court. We played six minutes in the first half, 10 to nine. Ryder leading St. Peter's. Bronx in a man to man. Julian Powell in. You thought you might see him early tonight. 6'9", 210 pounds. Has a size to contend with Ryder. Pull-up jumper is short from Griffin. Quickly the other way. It's Jordan lost the handle. What a hustle play by Griffin to the deck. And Jordan will be called for the foul. Eke goes out. And now I guess... The crowd doesn't like it, neither does Coach Dunn. It's Ryder basketball. They give the foul to Griffin. His first, team's third. Weaving out front, it's Allen. Allen to the foul line, his floater is short. Gonzalez tips it. A whirling Turner grabs it. Peacocks on the break. Turner swoops to the basket and lays it in. St. Peter's leads 11 to 10. 13-20 to go in the first half. In for Ryder, Frederick Scott, he throws it away. Here's Turner again, another two, and the Peacocks lead over Ryder, 13 to 10. So Turner, a quick four, just about 13 minutes to go in the first half. 
And now an offensive foul. And let's see who that goes on. Some body contact out near the top of the circle. That's going to go on Stevie Jordan, his first, each team with three. Mentioning Frederick Scott, wears number 13, a 6'8", 225 pound redshirt freshman forward from Munster, Indiana. 14 and a half points per game, just under eight boards per contest. Scott hit the buzzer beating three against Penn State. A huge win for the Ryder program. And he has really excelled since starting to come in off the bench. Started the first 10, the last eight. In those eight games, Scott averaging 17 points per game, just under nine rebounds, shooting 62% from the field and 48% from three-point range, 11 of 23. Also in for the Bronx, Tyree Randall, a 6'5", 165-pound freshman guard from Aurora, Colorado. Number 20, Tyree Marshall in. A drive by Turner, no good. But Enjai's there to tip it in. So the Peacocks getting on the offensive glass. St. Peter's leading by five, 15 to 10. 12, 15 to go in the first. In the middle, it's Marshall. We'll have a foul on St. Peter's. And that's gonna go on Enjai. That's a big one, his second. So Idowu will return. Team has four fouls. 12-14 to go in the first half, so Njai will take a seat for St. Peter's. It's Turner, Powell, Gonzalez, Njai, and Cameron Jones came in a couple of moments ago. They lob it out front for Scott. Thought about giving it to Jordan. Now Scott driving on the run. His floater came up short, but it's tipped up and in. Scott gets the basket. Shoots 52% from the field, 50% on that possession. Idowu, a three from the right side. Short goes over the backboard, nearly hit the shot clock. Bronx able to bring it ahead. Peacocks by three, 11.45 to go. The floater from Jordan, no good from the right side. Gonzalez nearly lost the dribble once he got over the timeline. Picks it up, bumped by Jordan. Brian O'Connell not buying that one, but can't blame Gonzalez for trying there. Gonzalez with the dribble, Peacocks with 10 to shoot. Jordan to the deck, Gonzalez left to the lane. Six on the shot clock. Peacocks need to get it going here. Gonzalez holding, creating out to Turner. A long, long, long three. That misses badly. About three feet off to the left. Hit off the bottom of the backboard. And that'll bring us to our second media timeout. 11-11 remaining in the first half. St. Peter's leads Ryder 15-12. This is St. Peter's Basketball on YouTube. Back in Jersey City, an exciting start to this ball game. Peacocks leading by three. St. Peter's seven of 17 from the field, one of six from three point range. The Bronx five of 13 from the field, one of four from three. St. Peter's has yet to get to the line. Ryder one of two, and that whistle was for the aforementioned shot clock. 
in the first game tonight, a loss by St. Peter's women to Canisius. The shot clocks weren't in sync. They were only working on the end of the floor where the players were shooting. I think they've tried to rectify that for the second game. They entered into Scott while the foul on the Peacocks. Foul is on the floor. First foul on Cameron Jones. Team already with five. Keelan Washington Ives is in for Ryder, a 5'9, 165 pound junior from Providence, Rhode Island. Drive along the baseline by Randall. We have another foul on St. Peter's. Already the team with six, the first on Elijah Gonzalez. Gonzalez leads St. Peter's with five. He has an assist and a turnover, perfect from the field. Two free throws here for the Bronx. Randall misses the first, comes in averaging just under three points per game. Now five of 10 from the line for the season. Ryder 60% as a team. Randall two points and a rebound in 15 minutes against Iona on Sunday. Randall misses a pair. Anecchione the rebound for St. Peter's. Gonzalez out of the game. Turner, left wing. High post for Idowu. Turner nearly lost his footing. A step back three, that's short. Not a great shot. Not the type of three that the Peacocks have thrived on this season. They take 24 per game. Of course, you want that inside, outside three. That time, Turner forcing it. Scott, top of the circle. His three rattles out. Offensive rebound is laid up and in by Marshall, using his size underneath. 6'9", 220 pounds, a sophomore from Philadelphia. Averaged 11 points per game, just under seven boards per contest. 15-14, St. Peter's leads. We're past the midway point of the first half. Griffin, left wing, looking underneath for Idowu. Good defense by Marshall. Peacocks with just six to shoot. Turner near side for Griffin. The three, no good short. Griffin had to put that one up. He had a good look. Defense came out a bit too late. Now we have another Peacock foul. This is the second one on Jones. This will put Randall back at the foul line. Peacocks have started off one of eight from three-point range. The Bronx, one of five. Ryder, one of four from the stripe. Taking some time to get this one and one going. So Randall, back to the stripe. The lefty with good rotation on that one. Demencio Vaughn back in for Ryder. Randall hits a pair. Ryder has the lead back 16 to 15. 9.33 to go in the first half. Griffin popping out front. Taylor, the reversal to Turner. Peacocks working the ball around the perimeter. 14 to shoot. Turner out to Taylor. Open for three and it's good. Quinn Taylor from long range. His ninth three of the season. Now nine of 25, so 36% for the campaign. And the Peacocks have the lead back 18 to 16. We approach the nine minute mark in the first half. A hard drive by Scott. Turner knocked it away, the loose ball to Taylor. Taylor weaving the dribble, floating it up. It's good off the glass. So Quinn Taylor, five in a row, and the Peacocks lead by four. Taylor comes in averaging seven and a half points per game, shooting 46% from the field. Tough shot there for Quinn, the sophomore from Amarillo, Texas. Washington Ives on the drive, needs some help. Jumper from left of the lane is good for Marshall. So Marshall has come in and been an impact player for Coach Baggett. 20 to 18, Peacocks, 8.20 to play in the first half. 
Peacox running the weave out front. Taylor right side. Idoa will set a ball screen. Taylor to the foul line. Peacocks with eight to shoot. And Echionia on the drive. The kick out to a wide open Turner. A long three and it's good. Devontae Turner from long distance. And those are the type of threes you want to take. The penetration, the kick out, and Turner knocking it down. St. Peter's up by five, 23 to 18. And there is Vaughn turning in the lane with a strong hand, the left hand, and floating it in. A very entertaining contest to start here at the Anatelli Center. Two New Jersey rivals going at it. Peacocks leading 23 to 20. Seven and a half to play in the first half. Turner looking into the post to Idowu. Idowu backing in. Idowu spins. The help was there. Turner looking to drive the baseline. Five on the shot clock. Turner needs to get it going. Idowu, three from the left corner, and it's good! The Peacocks have hit three threes in a row. They've opened up their largest lead of six, 26 to 20. 7.06 to go in the first half. Washington Eyes, a sweeping crossover. Scott in the left corner, driving, and yet another Peacock foul. That'll be their eighth in the first half. That'll bring us to immediate timeout. When we come back, Ryder will have a one and one. Seven minutes to go in the first, 26 to 20 St. Peter's. This is Peacock Basketball on YouTube. Back at the Anatelli Center. It's been a good one so far. We have four ties, three lead changes. Scott at the line. Misses the front end of a one and one. Bronx three of seven from the line. So the Peacocks have the basketball and a 26 to 20 lead. Peacocks looking to break a two game losing streak even up their overall record at nine and nine Turner holding the follow through he drills another three the Peacocks suddenly on fire from distance Devontae Turner two of four from three point range he's got ten points and the Peacock lead has ballooned to nine Jordan off the screen some contact there no whistle and now we have a travel so a rider turnover their sixth giveaway. Peacocks have turned it over just once. Eke back in for the Bronx. Got his first start tonight. 6.23 remaining in the first half. Njai back in with two fouls. Turner, he's been hot. He'll try it again. He's got it again. Devontae Turner unconscious, shooting with confidence. And the Peacocks lead by 12. And now we have another whistle because of the shot clock. And if you're a Ryder fan, certainly can't be happy about that. You're trying to get into the flow of the offense. Then you have to throw the ball back in again. Just under six minutes ago in the first half, Jordan with the dribble at the right elbow. Right side post for Marshall. A skip pass to Vaughn. His three is nothing but net. 
So that ends the Peacock run. Demencio Vaughn from distance. He is in the double figures. He has 10, halfway to his career high of 20. A nine-point lead for the Peacocks. 5.33 remaining. St. Peter's with some motion out front. Turner with the dribble. Powell goes right back to Turner. Peacocks with 10 to shoot. Turner double team. Turner gets rid of it. Open on the weak side. It's Taylor and he flushes it. Nice find there by Njai. Very patient. Ryder at all the defensive players on the opposite side of the floor. The Peacocks took advantage. St. Peter's leading by 11. In the paint, it's Marshall. No good. Four Peacocks are there. It rolls out of bounds off the hands of Powell. So St. Peter's a little unfortunate there, but you like that you had all those guys underneath the basket, team rebounding. But Ryder will get another crack at it. St. Peter's on top, 34 to 23. 5.05 to go in the first half. Marshall hands it off. Jordan back to Marshall. Now Ryder will work the other side of the floor. Eke, a jump pass near side. A three ball is good once again for Vaughn. So Vaughn backpedaling down the floor, smacking his hands together. And you can see why, bringing a lot of energy. He is up to this challenge. He has 13 points. The Peacock lead is eight, 435 remaining in the first half. Griffin with nine to shoot. High ball screen from Njai. Anechionia thought about the three. Anechionia driving on Eke. A corner three from Turner. Do I have to tell you it's good again. This one rattled home. Devante Turner lighting it up from three point range. Came into tonight's matchup shooting 33% from distance. He has given St. Peter's an 11 point lead. Durham thought he was gonna put up the runner. The answer from Vaughn, yes. Coach Dunn not happy with that defense. The kick out, a cross court pass. Vaughn shot ready. He rattles it home. And this has been a high scoring, exciting affair at the Anadeli Center. So with that timeout, We'll take one as well, 3.52 to go before halftime. St. Peter's leading rider, 37 to 29. This is St. Peter's basketball on YouTube. Back at the Anatelli Center in Jersey City. The shooters have taken over on both sides. St. Peter's 56% from the field, 15 of 27. Ryder 11 of 21, 52%. The Bronx four of eight from three. The Peacock seven of 14. Turner with 16, Vaughn with 16. Turner with the basketball to the foul line. Rising, firing, short, but he was hit across the arm. Devontae Turner, career high 22 points in 33 minutes at Niagara on Sunday, picking up where he left off. And that ball game was 8 of 14 from the field, 3 of 6 from 3, 3 of 3 from the line. Turner, 18 of 20 from the line coming in. And you know you're hot when that goes in. Nearly stuck on the back of the iron, little backspin, and it drops through. First free throws of the game for St. Peter's. Ryder three of seven from the line. Peacocks have committed eight fouls. Two on Idowu, two on Njai, and two on Jones. 
Turner makes a pair. He has 18 first half points in the Peacocks lead 39-29. 3.25 remaining. Good entry pass by Ives. Bronx couldn't convert. Gonzalez the other way. Gonzalez trying to hold his pivot foot, but he turns it over. Just the second turnover on the Peacocks. The Bronx with six giveaways. St. Peter's averages 12 and a half turnovers per game. The Bronx at 12.7 per contest. A foul on Powell, his first. That'll put Marshall at the line. Tyree Marshall averaging 11 points per game. 50% from the line coming into tonight's action. 32 of 64. Marshall makes the first. He'll get the bonus. Nine team fouls for the Peacocks. Four for the Bronx. Second from Marshall. Good. He now has six. 39-31 St. Peter's, 3-10 and counting here in the first half. Bronx in a man-to-man. -man. Griffin, left sideline. Griffin watched by Allen. Peacocks with 13 to shoot. Njai having trouble with it. Here's Turner in the corner. Njai thought about the three, didn't put it up. Four on the shot clock. And Echionia finds a rolling Njai. And he lays it in. The Peacocks play beat the clock. They have a 10-point lead back, 41-31, 2.35 to go. Hard drive down the lane, laid in nicely by Vaughn, going to the offhand, the right hand. He has 18, as does Turner. An eight-point lead for the Peacocks. Griffin in rhythm, a three from the right side, no good off the back iron. Allen, the long rebound for Ryder. Jordan attacking. Jordan fakes the handoff, gets to the baseline. Gonzalez bumped him, no foul call. Then Gonzalez swipes at it, goes out of bounds. Last touch by Stevie Jordan. So I think the Peacocks got a break there. That would have been the second foul on Gonzalez. We near the two minute mark. In the first half, Peacocks have the basketball and an eight-point lead. Turner right sideline. Gonzalez back to Turner. Thought about the three. The no-look feed to Anetchionia in the left corner. Drives into the paint and dragged the pivot foot. Anetchionia with two points. Turns it over there. 41-33. Ryder has the ball. St. Peter's on top. Peacock's in a man-to-man. -man. Jordan with a screen to each side. Looks fine on that ankle that he sprained on Sunday in the loss at Iona. The lob underneath. Scott misses it. Scott gets it back and lays it in. So there's the size up front for the Bronx. You got a ways to go here. Ryder is a type of front line that can wear you down. Peacock's have to continue to Box out, stay strong on the glass. Big part of this ball game, the Peacocks got hot from three-point range, open up the big lead. Now with a minute 15 to go, they want to maintain that advantage. 10 on the shot clock. Anetchionia driving once again, traveling once again. So Anetchionia chased off the three-point line. Didn't look very comfortable on those couple of drives, so a couple of turnovers for Anetchionia. Ryder gets it back, down by just six. We approach the one minute mark in a rapidly played first half. Allen, far side for Washington Ives. He moved the pivot foot. That's a Ryder turnover. So the teams trade turnovers as we near halftime. Peacock lineup. Gonzalez, Turner, Griffin, Powell, and Anechionia. Yeah. 
About a 26 second difference between shot and game clock. Ryder with just 14 fouls in the first half. Turner posting up at the left elbow on Washington eyes. Turner escapes pressure with the dribble. Griffin driving underneath the basket. He lays it in. There was no help defense. And Nick Griffin made it all the way to the basket. His layup makes it an eight point lead for St. Peter's. Wanted to say the shot clock is off, but it's been off the entire game. A hard drive there by Scott, and he'll get a couple of free throws. Actually, with the crowd to our right, can't see the shot clock on the far end of the floor. Peacock foul on Anetchionia. So the shot clock now, of course, is off with just 20 seconds to go in the half. Scott does a good job of holding the follow through. Makes his first free throw. Entering tonight's game, Scott, 46.6% from the free throw line. 54 for 116. And you know he is going to improve on that number. He's going to score a ton of points in his rider career, averaging 14 and a half points per game as a redshirt freshman, playing 26 minutes per contest. 10 seconds to go. Peacock's leading by six. Gonzalez, the hard drive. A wild attempt. Bronx with time. Three seconds, two seconds. Jordan throws it. Out of bounds, it was deflected. So with eight tenths of a second to go in the first half, Coach Baggett will take his use it or lose it 30 second timeout. Fast paced first half, a lot of good shooting. Sort of come to a lull here at the end of the half. But Ryder will get a chance to throw it in and see if they can get up a shot here. Bronx played a very challenging out of conference schedule at Xavier back on November 13th. Played well early into the second half before Xavier pulled away 101 to 75. Tough loss at Providence 88 to 84. Of course the win at Penn State Bronx 4-2 in league play. Had a win at George Washington, 67-65. So this is a very talented team that the Peacocks are facing tonight. St. Peter's with a six-point lead. Powell will guard the inbound passer. Lob over the backboard. And now the Peacocks will get a chance to throw it in. Miranda just threw it. Near the shot clock. Shot clock's been getting a lot of attention tonight. Coach <laughs> Paget just yelling at Randall for not giving his teammate a chance to go up and get it. We needed a trampoline for that one. Njai caught it. Nearly banked it in. It was too late, but when he caught it, he looked like he was surprised. But you have to know that you have just eight-tenths of a second left. Anyway. It's been a good first half and a good first half for the Peacocks and Devontae Turner. Turner goes into the locker room with 18 points. The Peacocks lead 43 to 37. On the rider side of it, Demencio Vaughn, 18 points, 7 of 9 shooting from the field, 4 of 5 from three-point range. So a fast-paced affair. It's been a good one in Jersey City. We'll be back in about 10 minutes or so for a closer look at the first half numbers. Once again at halftime, the Peacocks lead Ryder 43-37. to The St. Peter's basketball on YouTube.
Welcome back to the Anatelli Center. We are at halftime. St. Peter's leading rider 43 to 27. Peacocks looking to break a two-game losing streak. St. Peter's entered tonight's action eighth in MAC play. Ryder tied for third with a four and two MAC mark. St. Peter's looking to improve on a two and four MAC record. And other scores around the conference. Niagara leads at Quinnipiac 78 to 69 with about a minute to go in the second half. Siena at home leading Maris 58 to 49. Nine minutes to go in the second. St. Peter's really struggled shooting the three to start the ball game. Then they caught fire. The Peacocks hit six straight threes before a Nick Griffin miss late in the half. Devontae Turner, a string of four threes in a row by himself. Now Idowu hit one after Turner's third three, but Turner hitting four straight. He has 18 points. The Mencio Vaughn with 18 points for Ryder. So the Peacocks scoring 43 points in the first half. They average just 68 points per game for the season. Ryder, the second highest scoring team in the MAC, they score 82 points per game, 37 points in the first half. Peacocks are going to have to get on the glass. Ryder with seven offensive rebounds. The Bronx out rebounding St. Peter's 19 to 11. Ryder with the size advantage up front. They're a very long team. The Peacocks, though, have been able to take advantage of the Ryder giveaways. St. Peter's has turned it over just four times. Ryder averages about 12 and a half turnovers, just like St. Peter's, but they had nine giveaways in the first half, and the Peacocks turned those nine giveaways into 16 points. Peacocks holding their own in the paint, outscoring Ryder 20 to 14. Ryder, though, 11 second chance points to five for St. Peter's. Mentioned Ryder, seven offensive re rebounds. The Peacocks with just two. Neither team with another player in double figures. So, Demencio Vaughn, seven of nine shooting from the field, four of five from three. 18 points, two rebounds, two turnovers in 16 minutes. Three for Eke, two for Stevie Jordan, one of three from the field. Really hasn't gotten into the flow. One assist and three turnovers. Tyree Randall with two. Six points apiece for Scott and Marshall. 18 for Turner for St. Peter's on six of nine shooting from the field. Four of six from three, two of two from the line. Peacocks have attempted just two free throws. 7-11 from the line is Ryder. Seven points for Taylor, five for Gonzalez, four for Griffin, three for Idowu, two for Anechionia, and Njai with four. Three Peacocks with two fouls, Njai. Jones and Idowu, one player with two fouls for Ryder. That is Anthony Dorham. Dorham has it as we are underway here in the second half. A step back jumper is no good for Vaughn. Oh, they foul off the ball. Peacocks had 10 fouls in the first half. Ryder had just four. And that's a big one. Idowu. Picks up his third right off the bat here in the second half, 13 seconds in. So Njai returns. Ido has not been able to get into the flow. Taking two shots, both threes, hit one. So Ryder throws it back in, down by six. Jordan over to the far side. Jordan entered tonight's game with 111 assists. Floating to the rim, it's Jordan Allen, and he lays it in. The first two of the game for Allen comes in averaging 13 and a half. 111 assists, just 49 turnovers for Jordan. So six and a half assists per game, nearly three turnovers per contest. A contested three by Anechionia. No good off to the right. Not a good three to start the second half for the Peacocks. The answer from the left side by Jordan Allen. He salutes the Peacock crowd. He's got five to start the second half, and Ryder is down by just one. The Bronx have a lot of firepower. Five players averaging in double figures. Gonzalez gets free underneath, and he lays it in. Taylor with the pass out top. So Elijah Gonzalez with his first basket, the first two to the half for St. Peter's, and there he is again. 
Allen in the paint, floating it home. He has seven coming into tonight's action, shooting 37% from the field, 38% from three-point range. Started his career with eight straight games in double figures, single figures the last three. Looks like if he keeps going, he'll be in double figures soon. Griffin, a contested three, that's short. The St. Peter's lead is one. Allen stepping back, a heat check, and he's got it. Jordan Allen with 10 points to start the half, and Ryder has the lead back. Peacocks led by 12 at one point in the latter part of the first half. Anetchionia, right side, Griffin cuts through. Enjai wants to drive, Taylor drives the baseline, Taylor out the other side, and Echionia to Gonzalez, the pump fake. Six on the shot clock, Gonzalez driving, the reverse flip with the right hand, it's good over his shoulder. A tremendous shot by the freshman from Portland, Oregon, and we are knotted at 47. Gonzalez now has nine. 17, 18 to go in the ball game. Peacocks and a man to man. Allen, right side. Allen wanted to take it. Instead, he gives it up. Jordan, a contested three. Not a good shot. Gonzalez was all over him. Griffin, the long rebound for St. Peter's. He played three minutes in the second half. Gonzalez into the paint. Needs some help. 20 on the shot clock. Gonzalez will now look to set up the offense. Has a high screen from Enjai. Griffin looks underneath. Taylor, a three from the right corner. That's short. Taylor gets his own miss. Underneath to Anetchionia, holding his pivot foot. Gonzalez cuts, and that'll be a three second violation. Sixteen thirty-six remaining, we're tied at 47. Allen curls out front. Jordan looking underneath, finds Vaughn, had Gonzalez on his back. The help comes and a foul on the Peacocks. That goes on Gonzalez, his second, the team's second, the second half. We're tied at 47. Bronx with 15 on the shot clock. Jordan on the run, in the middle to Marshall. Turn around short, Njai is able to maintain his balance before traveling. Peacock's playing five on four. Marshall got hit in the face. Njai right baseline, Taylor cuts. Marshall commits the foul and he wants out. So that's gonna bring us to our first media timeout of the second half. Jordan Allen putting on a show. He knots it up for Ryder at 47. This is St. Peter's basketball on YouTube. Back at the Anatelli Center, Peacocks led by six at halftime. Jordan Allen not involved much in the first half. Got it going early in the second, made a layup, hit consecutive threes, then a, actually, layup, three, then another three, made it 47-45. Ryder, Elijah Gonzalez with a pretty layup to tie it at 47. And that's where we are now. Nick Griffin looking to throw it in. 
see if we can get a look at the shot clock if you're just joining us. Shot clock not working over the backboards. Here's Turner, a three from the left side. That's short. Shot clock was winding down. I'm getting some great assistance here. I just have to make sure if I'm reading left to right or right to left, like when the officials go to the table. Anyway, a turnover. Four on one. Turner lobs it for Enjai. He lays it in plus the foul. I don't know if that was the greatest decision on a four on one. It was contested, but Enjai was able to hang and put it home. Foul goes on Stevie Jordan, his second, team second. Enjai, that looked like it slipped out of his hand, misses the free throw. Enjai now with six points, three of three from the field. The Peacocks have a two-point lead. Turning in the lane, it's Vaughn, had the size advantage on Taylor. Vaughn lays it in. He's up to 20. And he has now tied his career high. We played five minutes in the second half. It's been a good one throughout. We're tied at 49. Griffin, a pull-up pop from the foul line. It's nothing but net. Peacocks need Nick Griffin to get involved. He's got six, but just three of ten from the field. 0 of 4 from three-point range. Peacocks in a man-to-man. -man. Allen, the dribble handoff to Durham. Bronx trying to get some motion going. Vaughn on the attack, floats it up. He gets the roll plus the foul. He is a difficult guard. With his size, his athletic ability, he is going to give Mac team fits for years to come. So Vaughn, now up to 22, can make it 23. Njai, like Idowu, with three fouls, so they're both on the bench. Powell with some early second half action. The lefty's free throw is good. 52-51, Ryder leads St. Peter's. 14-23 to go. Griffin out front, pass deflected. Vaughn with some aggressive defense. He's all over Griffin, eyeballing about 30 feet away. Griffin. With eight to shoot, Turner floating it up. That's off the mark. Here come the Bronx. Jordan, the hard push up the right side. Jordan hesitating, has a man open. Got it there late, the shot is blocked. They fight for it, it goes out of bounds. Karamoko Cisse, a junior college transfer from Denver, Colorado, was open for a while. Maybe Jordan didn't think he had the angle. Had to wait a minute. Defense recovered. Peacocks dodge a bullet. 52-51 Bronx, the Peacocks have the ball, 13.45 to go. St. Peter's weaving out top. Griffin, a long two from straight away, that's no good off the back iron. They battle for that long rebound. Taylor and Jordan were about to converge, tipped out of bounds by the Peacocks and the crowd behind us all over. The Bronx, in that case Jordan, he just had a smile on his face. Fans very close to the action behind us. Hard drive by Vaughn, he gets fouled, he'll go to the foul line. Vaughn now scoring in double figures, five straight games. Had a career high 20 at Drexel. Free throw is good. Two point lead for the Bronx. Ryder nine of 13 from the line. As a team, shoot it at 60%. Holds a follow through, makes a second. Ryder leading St. Peter's 54 to 51. That matches the Bronx largest lead 
of the game. Peacocks need a basket here. Ryder last in the MAC in free throw percentage. Peacocks lead the conference at 76%. A backdoor cut by Griffin. And that's a goaltending call. Good back cut by Nick Cisse. Got it. But give Griffin two. 54-53. Ryder leading. Under 13 minutes to play in the game. Ryder had a four game win streak snap that I own on Sunday. Peacocks have lost two in a row. Allen, a three from about 25 feet away, right in the face of Griffin. And he sticks his tongue out to the fans behind us. And I can see why. They've been riding the Ryder players. And Allen has come out and scored 13 points here in the second half. And we haven't even played eight minutes. Bronx, their largest lead of four. Gonzalez on the attack off the high glass. No good. Run out for Ryder. They give it to Allen. The pump fake driving. The floater almost got it. He's called for the offensive foul. Not sure who stepped in to draw it, but Allen showing a variety of moves. The confidence. He has just come alive here in the second half. Did not score a point in the first half. 5 of 8 from the field, 3 of 4 from 3 point range. That's his first foul. The team has 3. Peacock with 4 fouls in the second half. Turner gets it out front to Griffin. A quick reversal to Gonzalez. Powell posting up. Now will come out and set a screen. About 10 seconds on the shot clock. Taylor between the legs. One on one with Allen. Allen pushed him. No foul call. Taylor leans in. Came up short. Loose ball taken by Vaughn. Doesn't have his head up. He lays it in. Ahead of the field was Durham. Tough shot leads to transition points for Ryder. Vaughn was dribbling with his head down, but he got away with it. Ryder has opened up a six-point lead. The Peacocks led by six at halftime. So this is dangerous, but I'm going to do some quick math here. Ryder outscoring St. Peter's 22 to 10 here in the second half. Coach Dunn calls a timeout. He has two left. Ryder with three left. 11:40 remaining in the second. Bronx by six. This is St. Peter's basketball on YouTube. Back at the Anatelli Center in Jersey City. Ryder with a six point lead <laughs> over St. Peter's. Bronx fourth in the conference in field goal percentage at 46 points, 46%. In the second half, they've come out blazing. Eight of 12, 67% from the field. Gonzalez on the drive, drag the pivot foot. Peacocks turn it over for the sixth time. So now that brings us to a media timeout. We'll take another quick break as well. 11.26 to go in the second half. Ryder holding on to a six point lead over St. Peter's. This is Peacock Basketball on YouTube.
Back at the Anatelli Center in Jersey City. Ryder has outscored St. Peter's 22 to 10 in the second half to open up a six point lead. We've had seven ties, six lead changes. Ryder with the basketball. Allen to Jordan. Jordan nearly lost it. Marshall back in the game after getting hit in the face. He was calling for the ball. He deflected, had to come out and get it. Eight on the shot clock. Jordan a long pull up two. That's short. Jones nearly had it for St. Peter's. Then he's eventually able to pick it up. Gonzalez into the front court. Under 11 minutes to go. St. Peter's 5-0 here at the Anatelli Center. 2-0 in home MAC games. Turner, 18 first half points. Has yet to score in the second. Now the Peacocks give it away. St. Peter's sloppy with the basketball. A cut by Vaughn, beats Turner, he lays it in. Bronx really have it going on the offensive end. An eight point lead for Ryder. St. Peter's had a largest lead of 12 with six minutes and 13 seconds to go in the first half, so a 20 point swing. Turner, who couldn't miss in the first half, three feet away, too strong on the floater. Ryder with all the momentum and the basketball. We've hit the midway point of the second half. These teams meet again next Friday night down at Ryder. Marshall in the lane with the left hand over Njai. Njai did not even contest the shot. I know you got three fouls, but you got to put the hand up. Coach Dunn disgustedly calls a timeout. St. Peter's will have just one timeout remaining. A 30 for Coach John Dunn. Dunn in his 12th season. Peacocks were picked to finish eighth in the MAC poll. Ryder seventh. Peacocks are back in action. A noontime start on Sunday afternoon here at the Anatelli Center against Manhattan. Peacocks in desperate need of a basket here. Peacocks now picking up the energy, cutting hard, Turner to the foul line. And that Gionia thought about the three. And that Gionia double team. Jones with the shot clock winding down. I have to apologize, can't see it from where we're sitting. Jones travels with it, and Ryder gets it back. Someone behind us yelling, shoot the ball. And that's what the fans want, and that's what Jones needed to do, but instead he turns it over. Now just a beautiful pass right on time from Durham. And he finds Marshall, who lays it in. And Ryder puts the smiles out on the floor. They are clicking on all cylinders. Turner, a pull-up jumper from the left elbow. That's blocked by Durham, and here come the Bronx once again. Jordan attacking. A bounce pass, a tough catch. Somehow Vaughn was able to come up with it. Ball is loose, it goes out of bounds. Looks like it'll be Peacock basketball. Now the officials are gonna talk it over. Originally it looked like it was gonna be St. Peter's ball, but now they're gonna give it back to Ryder. Eighteen on the shot clock. Eight thirty-eight remaining. Ryder leading sixty-five to fifty-three. Peacocks led by six at halftime. Durham steps into a three, and that's good. Everything going for the Bronx. Durham with his twelfth three of the season comes in shooting thirty-two percent. So a twelve-point first-half lead for the Peacocks has turned into a fifteen-point deficit. 
Griffin on the drive, he gets fouled. Things turning quickly at the Anatelli Center. Idowu from the right baseline, too strong. So there's no other way to say it then. The Peacocks have lost all momentum and it's all in the hands of Ryder. Peacocks can't buy a shot right now and everything's going for the Bronx. Allen, a long three from the right side. That's too strong. Anetchionia up to Griffin. Turner on the attack. Turner needs some help. Griffin thought about the three. Didn't pull the trigger. Idowu in the paint. Good position. Turns with the right hand. He gets hit across the arm. That will be a rider foul, and that'll take us to immediate timeout. 7.37 to go in the ball game. Ryder has seized command. The Bronx lead the Peacocks 68 to 53. This is St. Peter's basketball on YouTube. Back at the Anatelli Center, 68-53, Ryder. Bronx about scored the Peacocks 31-10 in the second half. Mentioned on the Western New York trip, Peacocks did not have their best defensive effort, allowing Kanisha to shoot just over 50%, Niagara just under 50%. In the first half, Ryder 13 of 26, 50%. Second half, the Bronx 12 of 19 from the field, four of six from three, and three of three from the line. Idowu hits a couple of free throws. He now has five points. He'll go out for St. Peter's. Idowu and Njai each have three fouls. Demencio Vaughn, 29 points, a new career high for Ryder, but Jordan Allen with 13 second half points. Leading the Bronx, a block underneath. Peacocks down by 13. Need to get something going here. Turner with a three. Turner with his first points of the second half. He's now five of eight from distance. He has 21 points. One short of his career high, which he got at Niagara on Sunday. Allen goes behind the back. That three by Turner energizes the crowd. Here's Allen attacking, has it taken away by Jones. Peacock's in transition. Turner driving into the defense, gets hit across the face. This will be a rider foul. Think it'll be on Jordan, and it is. And that is the fourth foul on Jordan. So Turner getting into the body of Jordan. Vaughn has two, Durham has two. So other than Jordan, no one in foul trouble for Ryder. Turner at the foul line with 21 points. Ties his career high with that free throw. 90% coming in. Turner now three of three from the stripe. So 21 of 23 for the campaign.
Second free throw is good. So the Peacocks with seven straight since the timeout. Down by eight. Still time left, 6.42 to go. Marshall driving on Taylor. Durham, the long stride. An entry into the post. And we're gonna have a Peacock foul. First on Taylor. Now they change it up. They say that's just the third foul on Jordan. He's still in the basketball game. First foul on Quinn Taylor, team's fifth. 13 on the shot clock for the Bronx. They lead by eight. Durham, a left-handed pass into the corner, four, three. It's good for Vaughn. 32 points, 12 of 16 from the field, five of six from three-point range. With an answer, it's Griffin for three. We dip under six minutes to play. Things are heating up once again at the Anatelli Center. Marshall cutting, finds Durham. His reverse layup is good. That's just bad defense by the Peacocks, and you have to give Ryder credit. They have some very athletic players that can just really score the basketball. But still, Coach Dunn furious on the far side. A defensive breakdown, just crisp passing by the Bronx. 5.47 left, 73-63 Ryder. So the Bronx with 36 points in the first 14 minutes and 13 seconds of the second half. They had 37 at halftime. Turner leading St. Peter's with 23. That Griffin three gives him 11. Now one of five from three point range. Ryder with three players in double figures. Vaughn with 32. Allen with 13, Marshall with 10. Peacock with the weave out top. That Ryder timeout leaves them with two, the Peacocks with one. Anetchionia with a foul line jumper. Once again, an eight point lead for Ryder. 5.25 to play. Durham looking in the middle for Vaughn, he is held. Vaughn listed at 6'5", 210, a red shirt freshman from New York City. Entered tonight's action, averaging 13 points per game. Comes in off an 11-point effort against Ione in 22 minutes. But he has exploded tonight. He has it in the right corner. Turner fronting Marshall. And Turner gets called for the hold. Turner listed at six feet. Maybe a little smaller than that. Marshall with the size advantage at 6'9", 220. 17 foul on the Peacocks, and now Marshall at the line. He has struggled so far this season. The lefty gets 50%. He makes that one, he'll get the bonus. Mentioned a couple of times, Ryder as a team, just 60%. Last in the MAC in free throw shooting. Marshall looked good on those two. So unofficially, the Bronx. Now, as Turner lays it in, just beating the defense, the Bronx from the line, 12 of 16. So give Turner another two. The Peacocks are down by eight as he's under five minutes to play. St. Peter's needs to stop. Jordan spinning out front on the switch. Turner guarding Marshall, a bad pass there by Vaughn. And Echionia, right baseline for Taylor. He swoops in and lays it in. St. Peter's battling back. They're down by just six, 440 to play. Jordan with the dribble, telling his teammates to calm down. Over to the far side, 20 on the shot clock. Durham 
to Marshall. Marshall sandwich may have gotten away with the travel. Three Peacocks there. The shot doesn't draw iron. Turner the other way. He'll pull up for three. And it's good! Devontae Turner from distance. And the Peacocks have come back to trail by just three. 75-72 rider as we near the four minute mark. What a ball game this has been. Here's Jordan, the floater, it's good, plus the foul. Stevie Jordan has been quiet, but he has the answer there. Jordan with four, he'll go to the line looking for point number five. Remember Jordan sprained his ankle badly late in the first half against Iona on Sunday. Listed as questionable for tonight. He looks like he's moving fine out there. But certainly hasn't been his best game. But he hit a big shot there. Free throw is short. Tail of the rebound for St. Peter's. 77-72 rider. Turner into the front court. And Echionia thought about a three. The pull-up pop from the foul line. That's short. They fight for it. And the rebound goes to Durham. Good look there for Echionia. He hit one from there a couple of moments ago. So Ryder with the ball and a five-point lead. Jordan with the screen each side. Jordan still with the dribble. 15 on the shot clock. Marshall in the paint. Turner rakes him across the arm. Now Marshall, just a 50% foul shooter coming in. Looked good on those last couple of free throws. And he'll get two shots after our final media timeout. 3.31 left to play at the Anatelli Center. St. Peter's trying to make a comeback. They're down by five. This is St. Peter's basketball on YouTube. been a good one at the Anatelli Center. A scoring spectacular from Devontae Turner who has 28 for St. Peter's and Demencio Vaughn who has 32 for Ryder. Both players easily surpassing their career highs. The last foul on St. Peter's goes on Taylor, his second team's ninth. Marshall strokes another free throw. Bronx now 13 of 18 from the line. Marshall makes another. So Marshall, six of six from the line, came in 32 of 64. A seven point lead for Ryder. Turner, a three off the dribble. He knew it was off the moment he shot it. Great save by Taylor. Taylor takes it in the corner. Taylor picks it up. Taylor gets it back, his three, much too strong. Vaughn the rebound for Ryder. He now has five boards to go along with those 32 points. Not a great set for the Peacocks. Bronx shooting 63% in the second half. St. Peter's at 48%. Vaughn, one-on-one -on -one with the Neccionia. The pull-up pop, that's no good. Good seal by Taylor, goes out of bounds. Last touch by Quinn. It'll be Ryder basketball. Coach Dunn wanted the over-the-back call. And Brian O'Connell shakes his head and says no. So a fresh 30 for the Bronx, 2.51 to play. Ryder 79, St. Peter's 72. 
The right side, it's Allen. Jordan crossing over. Jordan into the paint. Durham, a contested three from the left corner, and it's good. Anthony Durham now with two threes. He has eight points, just a 32% shooter from three-point range. And the Bronx have come right back to take a double-digit lead. And that's Gionia along the baseline. Out to Griffin for three, and that's good. And Coach Dunn takes his last time out with 2.21 to go. This will be a full 82-75. Ryder on top of St. Peter's. We'll take a break as well. This is a full timeout to St. Peter's basketball on YouTube. Two twenty-one left. The Peacocks with no timeouts remaining. The Ryder leads it by seven. Peacocks have committed nine team fouls. The Bronx six. Jordan walks it into the front court. Marshall holding beyond the arc. Jordan to come and get it with a burst between the legs. Had the opening. Backs it off. Ryder with fourteen to shoot. They look to get it inside to Marshall. Marshall turning. He's hit across the arm. Nearly rolled in. Marshall, a six foot nine, 220 pound sophomore from Philadelphia, comes in averaging 11 points per game, just under seven boards per contest, had 10 and three in 23 minutes against Ioni, six of six from the line, seven of seven. So foul shooting has been big for the Bronx, especially Marshall. Bronx now from the line, 15 of 20. That one's short. Good hands by Taylor. An eight-point lead for Ryder. Here's Turner with a burst. Turner gets fouled before he puts it up and in. Devontae Turner will shoot a one and one. Vaughn picks up the foul, that's his third. So a big one and one for Turner. Front end is good. Turner now with 29 points. Nick Griffin with a season high of 37 for the Peacocks. Second one rattles through for the redshirt junior from Simsboro, Louisiana. Comes in averaging 11. He's hit the big 3-0, and the Peacocks are down by 6, 145 to play. Jordan crossing over on the run, creates contact while the blocking foul on Taylor. Didn't look like Taylor got there in time. So now Stevie Jordan with a couple of free throws. Ryder will be shooting two free throws the rest of the way. Three for Taylor. Jordan with four points, but had a big bucket a couple of moments ago. This one is off. So as good a player as Stevie is, shooting just 68% from the foul line, was having a great game against Iona before he got hurt. At 14 points in 17 minutes with six of eight from the field and two of two from distance. You can see, even though he's moving pretty well out there, 
maybe not really himself. Goes out of bounds, are we gonna have a foul call? So Jordan misses a pair. And now they're gonna review it. They'll go over to the monitor. So in a way it works out for the Peacocks. Coach Dunn took his last time out with 2.21 to play. He'll get an impromptu one here. Peacocks will be back in action for an early start on Sunday against Manhattan. Ryder will return to Lawrenceville to take on Marist on Saturday, 7 p.m. start. And then up to Fairfield, and then they return home next Friday night to take on the Peacocks. Sixty-third meeting between these two schools. Ryder leads 33 to 29. Peacocks won both of them a season ago. And it's going to be Ryder basketball. So you get the Bronx to miss a couple of free throws. You can't secure the loose ball. So Ryder will have it with a fresh 30, leading by six. Bronx. Set up in a box, they lob it in the middle for Allen, has it knocked away, goes to his back, a tie up, the arrow favors St. Peter's. Coach Baggett very unhappy there, he's pointing at the official on the near side of the floor. Certainly you don't want to get a technical at this point of the game. Turner driving, splitting defenders, he lays it in! Devontae Turner with 32, and the Peacocks are down by just four. 83-79 Ryder, 80 seconds to go. Losing the dribble is Vaughn right in front of us, and the Peacocks get it back. Coach Baggett has to control himself. He calls a timeout and is staring down to the far end of the floor. Cisse trying to help his coach out by pointing him towards the huddle. So what a game this has been. Peacocks with a 12-point lead in the first half. Ryder leading by 15 in the second half. Peacocks fighting back, led by Devontae Turner with a new career high of 32. So Turner and Vaughn each with 32 points. One nineteen to go. Peacocks with the basketball. Ryder with 17 fouls. Turner double teamed along the right side. A bad pass. He threw it behind Griffin. Jones slides into the backcourt to grab it. That's an over and back and the Peacocks give it away. Ryder called the timeout, they have one left. Allowed St. Peter's to set up the offense and Turner obviously has been great tonight. 10 of 18 from the field, six of 10 from three, six of six from the line, but the turnover there and the Bronx have it with 72 seconds to go. Any Peacock foul will give Ryder two free throws. Jordan just missed a pair, he has the ball. A floater along the left baseline is no good. The loose ball, Durham has it. Fresh shot clock for the Bronx. Taylor gives the foul. Touch foul there, Coach Dunn saying, why, I didn't want that foul, but he got it. And now Anthony Durham will get two free throws after Quinn Taylor picks up his fourth foul. Durham 79% from the line for the season. First trip to the line, short, but the top spin, it drops through. Durham at six points in 31 minutes on Sunday against Iona. He's been shooting the ball very well. Entering tonight's game he had made 23 of his last 29 from two point range he misses a second and the Peacocks throw it away 
However, St. Peter is fortunate as Allen stepped on the far side of the floor while trying to steal it. So just under 47 seconds to go. Peacocks with no timeouts remaining. Ryder with one. Bronx with 17 fouls. Ryder leading 84 to 79. Griffin will throw it in along the far side. Bronx in a man to man. Popping out front is Anecionia. He gets it right back to Griffin. He'll step into a three and it's good! Nick Griffin has made it a two point game. And Ryder is calling a timeout. Little confusion out on the floor. With 42.5 to go. And now they're going to take a look at the clock. So Nick Griffin got the pass back with confidence. Dribbled into a three. And now there just seems to be all sorts of confusion on the far side of the floor. Whether Ryder took a timeout, whether they're reviewing. Because the Peacocks are on their bench. The Bronx have the chairs out on the floor. And now they're saying, yes, it is a Ryder timeout. So the officials were confused. This night started out with confusion before the first game of our doubleheader when we arrived and there was no shot clock and there were two portable shot clocks on the side of the floor. And uh, it continues here at the Anatelli Center. So neither team with a timeout remaining. 43 seconds left. Peacocks down 84-82. We'll take a break. This is St. Peter's Basketball on YouTube. Forty-three seconds left. Ryder has the basketball. The Bronx lead 84-82. Peacock foul will give the Bronx two free throws. About a 13 second difference between shot and game clock. Jordan along the far side. Jordan one on one with Taylor. The crossover gets free to the basket. His layup is no good. But we have a blocking foul on the Peacocks. And Stevie Jordan will get two free throws with 22 and a half seconds to play. Foul goes on Turner, his second. Got underneath Jordan, made sure Jordan was okay. Helped him up off the floor. Stevie Jordan just missed a couple of free throws, but Ryder was able to get it off the miss. That free throw is good, so a three point lead for the Bronx. If Jordan makes this one, it'll be a two possession game. Remember, neither team with a timeout. Second one is perfect. And Jordan takes a look at the St. Peter's crowd. Devontae Turner quickly into the front court, attacking the basket. Some contact, the layup's no good. Marshall, the rebound, 14 seconds to play. And somebody needs to foul. They get it ahead to Durham, a three on one. In for the layup, it's Vaughn. Seven seconds to go. Ryder leads by six. Vaughn now with 34. Turner into the front court. Splits defenders to the basket. His layup is good. They don't bother to call the foul. 88-84. Ryder gets it in. And that is going to do it from the Anatelli Center. A valiant effort by the Peacock, but certainly a bitter loss. St. Peter's has now lost three straight. They led this ball game by 12 points with a little over six minutes to go 
in the first half. Ryder came back blazing in the second half, led by Jordan Allen. Devontae Turner got hot once again. He had 18 points in the first half. He ended up with 34, as did Vaughn, but just not enough for the Peacocks. St. Peter's falls to 8 and 10, now 2 and 5 in Mac play. They've lost their first home game of the season. It's like we'll get an interview here with Serge Clement. Coach. Hey, how you doing? How are you, sir? Uh, Certainly a tough one, but an exciting game. It had a lot of ebbs and flows, just not enough at the end. Yeah, we came up a little short. Uh, a lot of mistakes, a lot of mental mistakes, but uh, it's part of having a young team. You know, we expect those kind of mistakes to happen, not at the crucial moments, but it's all a, a learning and a growing process. You started off shooting slowly from three-point range. I think you were one of seven to begin. Then you started shooting those inside-out threes. Turner got hot. You hit six in a row. You had a 12-point lead with about six minutes to go in the first half. Yeah, it's, it's kind of the tale of two halves. Uh, need to play a complete game in order to, uh, um, you know, in order to get Ws in, in this league. Uh, Got to play complete games. Ryder, a big athletic team. Vaughn ended up with 34, as did Turner. But Jordan Allen didn't score a point in the first half. His 13 points to start the half were certainly big. Yeah, I mean, we know uh, in terms of percentages, knowing that he's a, a, a value guy, he can get hot quick. And, um, you know, that was on the scouting report. And guys just got to – we just got to be able to key in on guys even though they're not having good first halves. So, um, you know, hats off to uh, Bags and his crew. And um, we just got to get back to the drawing board and um, keep working. You got down by 15 in the second half. What was the message? What got you back in the game? At the end of the day is making shots. Right. Making right. shots and playing some defense. And, um, you know, we were able to get back in the, in the game due to some of their mistakes. And um, and us making some shots and getting some key stops. And, you know, it's a combination of both. Got to make shots, but also got to get some stops. And along those same lines, they hit a lot of free throws down the stretch. And they're not a great free throw to free throw shooting team by percentage last in the MAC, but they did hit some big ones. Yeah, you know what happens when, when you when, when people talk about it and key in on specific guys not shooting free throws great, it always uh, turns out the other way around. Tyree Marshall doesn't yeah. shoot great. Uh, eight Richard, for eight. Yeah, today he was eight for eight. You know, percentages come around either in, the, in this game specifically or just later on throughout the season. And today, this is, uh, you know, he was able to make some shots, so... Lost three in a row now, have to regroup, have a couple of days off before Manhattan early on Sunday. Yeah, you know what, uh, we just got to get, get back to the drawing board, take care of the ball, uh, you know, and, and just get back to playing Peacock basketball, uh, Coach Dunn basketball, which is uh, blue collar, tough, gritty, and, um, you know, and then uh, we'll get back to it. I know it's tough after a loss coming over, but last question. Sure. Defensively, up in New York, 51% in the game against Canisius, just about 50% against Niagara. This team's very difficult cover, 55%. Are there any adjustments, or is it just, like, refining, keep doing what you're doing, and get back, like you said, Peacock basketball? Hey, is, is Manhattan shooting 55%? or? Well, I don't know. You're, we're going to find out Sunday. Yeah, I mean, I haven't watched a single league of Manhattan, but 55%, either way you put it, uh, it's a lot of – it's too many layups you're giving up. And, uh, you know, part of it is us switching a lot on defense and, and getting a lot of mismatch and cross matches. So that's what causes a lot of uh, – you know, easy laps in the paint. So. Coach, thanks for coming over after a difficult loss. We will see you on Sunday. Yes, sir. Thank you. So there you have it. Coach Clement being nice enough to come over after the game. Tough loss for the Peacocks. Let's take a look at the final numbers. Ryder, 30 of 55 from the field, 10 of 16 from three-point range, 18 of 27 from the line, out-rebounded St. Peter's 38 to 24. Ryder with 18 assists on 30 baskets. They turned it over 15 times. Demencio Vaughn, new career high, 34 points, 13 of 18 from the field, 5 of 6 from 3, 3 of 3 from the line. Did turn it over five times, 15 points for Tyre Marshall, four rebounds, 4 of 8 from the field, 4 assists in 28 minutes. Marshall, correct myself, 7 of 8 from the line, not 8 of 8, but 7 of 8 certainly got it done. 13 points for Jordan Allen, all those points in the second half really sparked the Bronx when they came back and took that lead 
and then we're able to extend it. He was 5'11 from the field, 3 of 5 from 3. Nine points for Durham. A couple of big shots. Stevie Jordan off the ankle injury, six assists, three turnovers, six points in 36 minutes. Also grabbed five rebounds, two of six from the field, 0 of 1 from 3, 2 of 5 from the line. Frederick Scott, not much of an impact, played just 10 minutes, six points, two rebounds. Let's see, two points for Randall, three for Eke, who got his first start as a Bronx. Washington Ives played but did not score. Cissé didn't score. And that rounds up. They have Paxton Wilson in the box score, but unless I missed something, <laughs> he did not play. St. Peter's 17 of 31 in the first half, 15 of 30 in the second, 32 of 61 for the game, 53%. Peacock 7 of 15 from three-point range in the first half, 5 of 11 in the second, 12 of 26 for the game, 46%. Peacock's got to the line just nine times, made eight of nine. Devontae Turner, 34 points, a monster game, 32 minutes, 11 of 20 from the field, 6 of 10 from three, 6 of 6 from the line, had a rebound, 5 assists, 1 turnover, and 3 steals. You can't do much better than that. Nick Griffin with a big 3 to get the Peacocks to within 2, 17 points in 36 minutes, 7 of 15 from the field, 3 of 7 from 3. No other Peacocks scored in double figures. Idowu. Tough game for him, just 13 minutes, got in foul trouble early, five points and a rebound, one of three from the field, one of two from three. Elijah Gonzalez played 23 minutes, did his damage in the first half, nine points on four of six shooting, one of one from three, an assist and three turnovers, two steals. Quinn Taylor, nine points, nine rebounds in 27 minutes, four of eight from the field, one of three from three. Taylor started that barrage of threes in the latter part of the first half when the Peacocks made six in a row. Njai, six points and three rebounds in 15 minutes, was three of three from the field. And Echionia, four points in 30 minutes, two rebounds. Two of six from the field, 0 of three from three. Julian Powell, 10 minutes and a rebound, didn't take a shot. Cameron Jones also got some early foul trouble. 14 minutes, one rebound, didn't take a shot, three turnovers and two steals. So nine Peacocks played, seven scored. Once again, St. Peter's 46% from three-point range, but just not enough. Peacocks with 39 paint points, Ryder with 36. Peacocks were able to take advantage of the Ryder giveaways. 15 turnovers for the Bronx. The Peacocks with 23 points, 10 turnovers for St. Peter's, only nine points for Ryder, but the second chance points. 20 second chance points off 12 offensive rebounds. The Riders size overwhelming the Peacocks on the glass. Peacocks got out in transition. 15 fast break points, 4 for the Bronx. Bench points, 40 for St. Peter's, 23 for Ryder. Of course, most of those points coming from Turner. Big swing in this game. Ryder had a largest lead of 15 with 8.5 to go in the second half. St. Peter's had a 12-point lead with 6.13 to play in the first, but the Bronx were able to extend the lead. The Peacocks fought back to get it within two, but they just couldn't get over the hump. So, Ryder improves to 12-7 and seven overall, 5-2 and two in the MAC. The Peacocks fall to 8-10 and 10 overall, 2-5 and five in MAC play. Peacocks will be back in action, as we said before, on Sunday night afternoon and early afternoon usually games are two but we're starting at noon on Sunday and the Peacocks will take on Ryder next Friday night down in Lawrenceville the Bronx will be back in action on Saturday as they host Marist so that's going to do it for us here at the Anatelli Center I want to thank Amanda and the crew for all of their help my name is Chris Radicke. you have watched St. Peter's basketball on YouTube